Hello and welcome to the house in Fata Morgana. This game looked interesting to me because it seems to be like a gothic tale. It is a visual novel with horror and tragedy, so perfect for Spooktober. The game originally came out in 2012, which explains the resolution you see here. I bought it a few years back and I have considered playing it for the channel on and off and the only thing that made me hesitate really is that it is a full-length Japanese visual novel, meaning it will get very long, we will be here a while. <laughs> I'll still try to do some small projects here and there in between, but yeah, we will... it will be a long journey. <laughs> so, let us go explore the dark history of the house in Fata Morgana. There is a house. That sits beyond dark, dense woods. Like the world fading into view after a dream. That old mansion appears before you. Without realizing it. You instinctively accept as truth the events unfolding before you. The house lives in perpetuity, an amalgam of myriad fates and generations. No one knows who first said. That the mansion was cursed. Morgana. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Have mercy on me, O Father. cast their souls into eternal damnation. I was looking down upon a corpse. My own corpse. I was afflicted with great despair at the sight of it being dragged to the place of my crucifi crucifixion. 
my soul crumbled and I was wholly extinguished. Indeed, I did once lose everything. However, as I faded into darkness everlasting, I heard a voice calling out to me. And so, I vowed once more that no matter how long it may take, how great the obstacles that stand in my way, or what form you may assume, I shall come back for you. That I must return to that house. So I ask of you, please wait until this mutilated body arrives there once more. Your consciousness, wavering like a ship at sea, was slowly drawn back to the surface. T with each new breath feeling gradually returned to your fingers. Master. You could hear the pattering of rain from somewhere. Master. And the sound of a crackling fire. Wake up, master. Creak, creak, creak. Wake up. When you came to, you were rocking back and forth in a rocking chair. The room was dimly lit. Aside from the flickering of the fireplace, there was no other illumination. No light shone through the dark through the closed windows, there was only the pitter-patter of rain on the glass. It was as though the whole mansion had been enveloped in darkness. Oh, splendid. You have finally awoken. Someone called out to you. You were about to search the room, but that turned out to be unnecessary. The source of the voice was crouching beside the chair, looking up at you with emerald eyes. Good morning, master. Good morning. Oh, that's our first choice. Uh, uh, so, this is not a kinetic kinetic novel, you have some choices, but they're very few, and there aren't any roots. It's just that there's one ending that is considered the true ending, and the others are, I think, only bad endings, so it was advised to save pretty much after every choice, so that's what I'm going to do, just to be safe. <laughs> So, let's return the greeting. Good morning. <laughs> what is the matter? Are you still waking up? You seem rather drowsy. Come now, you must gather yourself. Though I am glad to hear your voice. I have simply been waiting so long for this moment. Tending to the mansion all by my lonesome, ensuring it was ready for your return, whenever that time may be. When I caught sight of you through the window, my heart fluttered. The time had finally arrived. You were perplexed. This woman, who looked like a maid, seemed to know you, but you had no memory of her. 
What kind of herbal tea would you like to start your day with? I have some wonderful chamomile leaves, if you would like. Or perhaps your tastes have changed since last we met. Tell me, master, what would you like? <laughs> I beg your pardon. I allowed myself to get too excited. But I hope you will be sympathetic, master. I am just utterly elated that I could see you again. The woman appeared to be genuinely delighted that you were, had awoken, but she seemed to lack the energy typical of her age. Or perhaps life was a more appropriate word than energy. But the gloom extended beyond the maid. It seemed to encompass the entire mansion. The plaster walls illuminated by the fireplace and the rose engravings in the ebony pillars felt vaguely familiar. But a crushing sense of claustrophobia overpowered that familiarity. It seemed as though the house wasn't interested in accepting you just yet. Oh my, you do not know who I am? Do you not know who you are either? That is quite the predicament. If you cannot remember who you are, then who am I to serve? The woman's face was pale, almost as though she... A faint chill ran down your spine. You are the master of this house. Though it would seem you have no memories of such. Quite the dilemma. If you know not who you are, then you are no different than a stranger to me, no? Indeed, you have returned. But from where? That I cannot say. Then how about this? I am a servant of this mansion, and as such I am familiar with the many incidents that have, have, that have taken place here. I shall show you the history of this house, master. That will surely allow you to recall who you are. The flare freshly awakened gears in your head began to turn as you mulled the things over. The maid had called you the master of this house. But without a single mirror in the room, you had no way of seeing what you looked like. Unable to decide, you reflexively nodded. Let us be off then. And fear not, I merely entreat you not to let go of my hand. Should you hold it tightly, you need not worry about being washed away by the waves of history. No matter what happens, you mustn't let go of my hand. Your hand and hers, you followed the maid's lead through the hall. The air within the mansion was oppressive, as though a black miasma hovered within. The house was bleak and barren, hardly a trace of colour to be found. You came across an open window. Beyond it lay nothing but darkness. Neither sunlight nor moonlight could be seen. There were no chirping birds, no rustling grass, no signs of life at all. Everything that would normally give colour to the world had vanished entirely. The only other presence was that of the maid. Following her lead, you proceeded through the mansion. After some time, you arrived at a double door the glass within shattered. 
The door, once pure white, had long since faded into a dull grey. It appeared to lead to the back garden. You could hear children laughing on the other side. Though it is in the state you now see it, a beautiful, beautiful garden once lay beyond these doors. The owner of the time enjoyed gathering rare species of rose from all across the world. At its grandest, it seemed every flower was in constant competition for the most majestic bloom. Would you like to see this wonderful era of splendor and prosperity? <laughs> I very much hope it is to your liking, Master. The maid opened the doors to the back garden. A sudden gust of wind brushed across your face, forcing you to close your eyes as you followed the maid out the doors. When you next opened your eyes, the world was no longer blanketed in shadows. The first door. Sixteen oh three. Move the cursor to the bottom right corner. Sure, I already found the menu. Thank you. The mansion had an alluring air of beauty about it in that era. It was almost like something out of a fairy tale. This period of history could perhaps be described as a symphony of destruction as cumbersome principles of old came crashing down. Freed from the day-to-day -day oppression of these antiquated precepts, the people seemed to hark back to the more poetic, expressive ways of old. They took these newly blossoming emotions in hand, and with them they wrote literature, painted portraits, composed theatre, and found love. Even the church, which had maintained authority throughout the Middle Ages, embraced the changing times, adopting the culture's flowering sense of aesthetic. War would break out not twenty years from then, plucking the ripened era from the tree of history, but that is of no concern to us now. At the time, it was still what people referred to as the Golden Age. A period of furor for all who were there. Now, let us take a slight detour. No, we will not be changing locations. This is a tale about the mansion, from beginning to end. We will, however, be moving through time. Say, about eight years into the past. A very wealthy family lived in the house then. The mother and father, brother and sister, all had distinctive, beautiful flaxen hair. I was always enamored by their hair. By contrast, mine is the color of a wet crow. See, there I am, standing around, looking rather a fool. I was happy back then. And what reason did I have not to be afforded the opportunity to attend to such a beautiful home? So I poured my heart into serving that family. Listen closely, if you would. That soft, fleeting sound that could only be a young girl singing. Can you hear it? The girl you see, cheerfully picking crimson roses and singing like a songbird, 
was called Nelly. Though young, she sang with elegance. Let me do one thing real quick. I'm sorry, the music is special. <laughs> it's not bad, but it's very loud. And I find that a bit distracting. It's for you as well, I think. Um, yeah, especially because some chimes seem to be louder than others, but... Uh, Nelly was deeply fond of the house's garden, and she would often spend her afternoons there. Gorgeous roses gathered from all across the world bloomed in the garden. They were given the utmost care, and even had their thorns removed. So young Nelly would not hurt herself naturally. The light brown-haired girl carefully plucked petals from the roses, gathering them up as she sang. Her voice was like music played by fairies. Nay, the sight of her was like an angel descended from heaven. Oh dear, please don't look at me like that. I admit I was being rather fanciful. But what is a woman if not fanciful? <laughs> little bird, little bird, singing night and day. Little buddy heart, sing your words away. Pretty flowers all around, all around the little birds. And even when the sun comes up, um. Oh, dearest Mel, I've forgotten what comes next. Are you listening? Nelly was, as a matter of fact, not the only visitor to the Rose Garden that day. She always came with her older brother, Mel. The young siblings were inseparable. Mel adored his little sister, who in turn pined for his attention. The sight of the two innocent children cuddling together, not yet shackled by fear for the future, was truly heartwarming. That day, Mel was sitting in the shade of a tree, reading a book. As I am sure you are aware, in that time, books could not yet be mass-produced. What he was reading had been copied by a scribe. I presume he had borrowed it from the church. The book, having passed through many hands over many years, was visibly worn, but I suppose that just speaks to its importance. It was, in fact, a Latin grammar textbook he was reading. Mel was a clever boy. He had attended church from a very young age, where a priest would instruct him in Latin grammar. So, at that time, I believe he was capable of reading even advanced texts. Oh, dearest Mel, please. The young girl approached her brother, who was consumed by the text. In her hands, she carried a large pile of rose petals. Though her sister's shadow overlapped with the trees, the boy still did not notice. So Nelly puffed her cheeks, thrust out her slender arms, and let the petals fall. Uh. <laughs> Look, your head is covered in roses, Mel. Oh, Nelly, you got petals on the book. This isn't mine. I can't afford to let it get dirty. It's your fault, dearest Mel. I tried to get your attention. And besides, flowers won't get a book dirty. I must raise the white flag. 
When did my little lady find herself such a sharp wit? While waiting for you, dearest Mel. I waited and I waited and you didn't so much as glance at me. I'll be an adult by the time you're done reading that book. Wow, that soon. That soon. Mother says girls grow up fast. <laughs> she may be right. In that case, we should do something together before you're all grown up. Surely you won't play with me any longer when you become an adult. That's not true. I'll still play with you, even when I'm grown up. But grown-ups don't play, Nelly. They sure do, as you can see presented here. <laughs> Fine, I'll stay a child forever then. Didn't you just say you were about to grow up? Hmm. You're so mean, Mel. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please don't pout, my little lady. How about this? To make it up to you, I'll play whatever you want today. Really? Do you mean it? I want to play make-believe. Make-believe? Make-believe. I will be a princess taken captive by an evil kingdom, and you, dearest Nell, will be my valiant knight. And then you turn into a prince when you rescue me. A knight can become a prince? Impressive. They can. Knights and princes both have to be charming, so of course they can. Which is why... Which is why it must be you, dearest Mel. No one else can be my prince. Or my knight. Well, he may have appeared outwardly embarrassed as his rose-cheeked sister proclaimed prattlingly, I'm certain you were smiling on the inside. After a few moments, he meekly knelt, bringing himself to eye level with Nelly and gently stroking her soft hair. Alright then. You're my princess, Nelly. And not just anyone's princess, dearest Mel, but yours alone. So, um... Don't be anyone else's prince but mine, okay? Nelly. Jeez, my princess is quite the fauna. Is that... bad? Does it make you dislike me? Not at all. I'm proud to have you as my sister, Nelly. You mean more to me than anything in the world, my dear princess. <laughs> I love you, dearest Mel. You'll always be my prince, forever and ever. Her mood quite improved, Nelly began humming the melody of the song she had forgotten the lyrics to. Holding the skirt of her dress out from her body, the young girl pranced about the rose garden. Mel, his eyes on her back, gave a little shrug. Oh, Nelly, don't come crying to me if you trip running like that. But Mel was not entirely disapproving of her sister's excitement. He carefully brushed aside the petals on his book, set it in the shade of the tree, and began chasing after Nelly. They were picturesque siblings, brimming with hope. And at this time in their lives, there was nothing to jeopardize that hope. Would it not be wonderful if children could stay children forever, Master? As I see it, though, the pleasant, gentle times in our lives have value, because they come to an end. Wouldn't you agree? Time continues to flow, impartial and without exception. And as such, everyone's childhood comes to an end. 
Be that as it may, does time also flow at the same speed for each individual? <laughs> now, let us take a trip down the river of time. I would be very much delighted if we could remain at this point in time, but unfortunately, we cannot. Please, do not let go of my hand, Master. I'll be on my way then. Oh, you usually stay for longer. Yes, I have an errand to run today. Thank you for your time, as always. Would you like the book back sometime next week? Next week or the week after. Hold on to it as long as you'd like. But surely there are others who want to use it. None as sharp as you, Mo. Put yourself in my shoes and you'll understand. I want to give you any advantage you can get. <laughs> oh, do you not believe me? No, I believe you, father. And I mean to do whatever I can not to disappoint you. That's the spirit. If you need anything, don't hesitate to ask. I'm proud to have you as my pupil. Ah yes, and no, do consider what we were talking about. Going to university? Indeed. If you do, I can introduce you to some accomplished instructors. There is very little left for me to teach you, and I believe you would make a fine priest. I... It's an honorable thing now, to devote yourself to the service of our Lord. I'll give it some thought. If you'll excuse me then, I'll see you again. Our doors are always open. Farewell. So the priest has been teaching him, but he seems unsure of becoming a priest. What has he been teaching him then? Like anything else? Latin? I mean... I suppose there's a variety of books there that he cannot get anywhere else, so... Might be just education in general, broadening his horizon, but... Huh, seems curious. Because he seems to be well off enough that they could have like a house teacher that could teach him... stuff. <laughs> Not to need a priest. Kind of strange. Let me turn the music down a bit more. I'm, I'm sorry, this is so finicky. It's always hard for me um, playing a game for the first time. And as I said, when the tracks do seem to have different volumes, because especially in the beginning of the game where you have only this, this uh, soft piano playing, that was much quieter than the songs here with the vocals. And normally I don't mind having music a bit louder for myself, but I still want you to hear me talking, <laughs> if that makes sense. I'm just not good with all this audio stuff, I'm sorry. I hope you can still hear everything, but you can otherwise read it for yourself, I suppose. But let's carry on. Whether it's in the service of God or the service of the church, it is an honorable profession, but theology? I wouldn't mind attending university, but I'm not sure. I'd kind of like to do something different, something more befitting of the times. As for what though, I'm stunned. 
but I need to make up my mind soon. If I drag my feet for too long, even my father is liable to grow impatient. Mercy me. Young sire. Blessed young sire. Arms. Arms for the poor. Ah. This beggar. If I'm not mistaken, he's been outside the church since last week? Arms. The way he shakes his head. I can get a glimpse of his forehead under his hood. He's completely bald. Buy yourself some bread with this. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless your soul. Thanks. The Lord. Oh no. Nelly's going to be cross if I don't hurry home. Curses, and it looks like it's going to rain. Master. Master? Oh, thank goodness. You appear to have a firm grasp on your consciousness. I was afraid you had accidentally let go of my hand. <laughs> now, Master, this is the period of time I truly wished to show you. The boy reading in the Rose Garden was now a fine young man. Nonetheless, he still bore the same gentle eyes as before, and he would from time to time show remnants of that innocent young boy. He was, in his own mind, still making the transition into adulthood, I suspect. Mel frequently visited the church, on Sundays to participate in Mass, of course, but more often to be tutored by the priest. In addition, he also attended a private school run by an eminent marquis. Though it was not a school where students had desks and sat in rows. They studied at the Marquis' estate. Secondary and higher education was not the same as it is today. What timeline is today? I find that very curious. Huh. Well, for now, we're in the 1600s. And Mel was considering university. The priest wanted to recruit him to the church, but Mel was having difficulty deciding what he should do. And that he had such a choice is envious, is it not? Truly. Good afternoon. I'm here to pick up my order. Is it ready? Hey, ready and waiting, young Master Rhodes. Oh, don't call me young master, please. I beg your pardon. Can I seem to get my head out my head out of the past? I can't do accents, I'm sorry. Your order's right here, sir. Mel had stopped at a jewelry store in the center of town on his way back from the church. The building was both a workshop and storefront, and the nobles of the area were deeply fond of the master's wares. He was so skilled, even the royal family had commissioned work from him. As a matter of fact, the wooden sign out front was engraved with a replica of a piece of his jewellery set to be on display in the palace. His artistry flourished in this golden age. The number of shops selling luxurious items such as jewellery rose in kind. However, the clientele of these shops comprised a very narrow range of people. May I have a look? Of course, of course. Good, it came out just as I hoped. 
splendid work. <laughs> Can I afford to disappoint a loyal customer like yourself? An admirable work ethic. I'm sure she'll love it. Such a kind lad, young master. A boy back home could do well to learn a thing or two from you. Every man ought to show women some cordiality. Coming home to a cold fireplace is a sad thing indeed. <laughs> Again, please don't call me young master. My apologies. I'll take this and be on my way then. Good day. If you find yourself in need of what else, just let me know. I can make any jewelry you ask for. Come to me and your sweetheart's tale be sure as be sure as mate. And I guarantee the two of you will have all sorts of fun when you give it to her. Please, I don't have a sweetheart. Huh. Well, that's a surprise. I'm sure many girls are vying for your hand too. Are vying for your hand too, young Mr. Rhodes. A fine family, good looks, charming. And your future's so but I I'll be on no way then. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Good day. Come by again anytime. Wow, loose mouth, eh? Goodness. <sighs> Maybe I'll say I want to study abroad or something. Patient as my father may be, that would certainly anger him. I can hear it now. You're wasting your God-given talents, boy. I could renounce my name and rank, go somewhere far away. That sounds like the kind of plan Nelly would come up with. As he drew closer to the mansion, the rich fragrance of roses grew more prominent. Over time, this distinctive scent had led visitors to refer to the house as Rose Manor. It was also probably a play on the flaxen-haired family's last name, Rhodes, which you heard the owner of the jewellery store say just moments earlier. The mansion looked quite different than it does now, no? No thickets of ivy covering the walls and no rotten broken doors to be found. I wonder what the Rhodes family would think if they saw the house in its present tragic condition. The sight of their abundantly blooming roses, a veritable symbol of prosperity, long since withered and turned into soil. My apologies, I got a little sentimental here. There. Let us forget for a moment about our own time. I suppose I stayed out a little too long. Oh well, the sun still shines high in the sky. I'm sure it's... <laughs> dearest, dearest Mel, what took you so long? Wherever have you been? I've been waiting for ever. Nelly? You're not in the house? Nope. You were taking so long, I decided to wait by the gate. But you didn't even notice me, at all. Is there any way to treat a lady? All that studying's got your head stuck up in the clouds. No, it hasn't, really. Also... You're heavy. Could you please get off my back? I've been gradually reducing the amount of sweets I eat 
and I love sweets, to maintain my figure for a new dress, and you call me heavy? Uh, I didn't catch that. Were you saying a tongue twister? You're such a dimwit, Mel. Jerk. Blockhead. Weakling. And obnoxious to boot. Whatever happened to the delightful little girl who was once my sister? She'd probably throw a fit if I said that out loud. I mean, she still seems to adore you, so... Did it change, really? Should you really be outside, Nelly? You are the star of today's event. It's fine. They can call it a birthday party, but I know it's just about fraternizing. It's obvious what father's true motives are. He'll be gathering a bunch of boys from good families to look for someone to marry me off to. Ugh, I have no interest in and no interest in, no interest in that at all. Don't be like that, Nelly. They're all here for you. At least enjoy what you can of the party. Mm -hmm. I guess. And besides, it's not completely terrible. Look at this, dearest Mel. What do you think? What do I think? About what? About... What? Mel? My new dress! It arrived! I'm wearing it! How could you not notice? I... I didn't notice it was something I hadn't seen before, but you have so many dresses, Nelly, so... But this is the dress I had made just for today! Look at the color. They're, at the colors. They're so pretty. Can I for a second? Oh, huh. interesting design. I'm personally not fond of orange, but the butterfly design is kind of cool. I don't know if it's really historically accurate, but eh, whatever. It's the work of a renowned dyer. And this belt is just lovely. You see how it comes together to form a butterfly? Uh, oh. Oh, I'm just absolutely in love with it. I think I'll be wearing this dress for a while to come. So tell me, what do you think? Does it look good on me? Yeah, uh, it does. It's pretty. <laughs> In some ways, I guess she's still a delightful little girl. Oh, dearest Mel, I love you! Whoa, don't jump on me like that. Uh. Oh my, you dropped something. And what have we here? Wait, hold on, no, you can't have that yet. Is it a present? G give it back. I was going to give that to you later. I knew it, it's for me. And just what could it be? Hey, don't open it. What's the big deal? It's going to be mine soon anyway, isn't it? Oh, I love it! A rose necklace! And this design. It's from the jewelry the royal family uses. Oh, my dearest Mel. You had this made just for me. Oh, jeez. It defeats the purpose if you open it before the party. 
happiness is always better sooner rather than later, Mel. I think I'll put it on right now. There. How does it look? It looks lovely. Mm -hmm. My prince is still the sweetest in all the land. D don't make such weird noises. Oh, but why not? Well, maybe for my sake, because I have to, to make them here, so... A prince always knows exactly what his princess wants. And this princess wanted some rose jewelry to go with her new dress. Understand? <laughs> Jeez, I sure don't have it easy playing your prince, Nelly. It might be about time you found a new one. A prince is a prince because you can't just find one standing on the street corner. If you want to retire, dearest Mel, you're going to have to wait another ten years. That's a long time. Or, if you find yourself a new princess. Uh, I'm not so... Hmm. <laughs> You're about as romantic as a rock, dearest Mel. I mean, you made him promise not to get another princess, didn't you? But worry not. Your adorable sister will always be your princess. Mm -hmm. What more could you want? Are you really allowed to be the judge of that? I mean more to you than any other girl in the world, do I not? Then that makes me your perfect princess. <laughs> hey, what was with that love and it'll all be over soon, love? You're always telling me I mean more than anyone to you. Yes, you do. More than anyone in the world, my beloved baby sister. <laughs> I'll take good care of the necklace. Thank you, my dearest Mel. Well, if you're happy with it, then so am I. You're very welcome. Now, back into the house with you. Can't have a party without the guest of honor. Do you know if anyone is here yet? Mm, nope. I imagine they'll be here soon though. Were you down at the church again today, Mel? Yeah, there was something I didn't know how to translate, so I went to look it up. Wow, so diligent. I can't say I really like the priest there personally. Actually, I kind of feel the same way. What? Really? Why? Well, you know. I have my reasons. So even you don't always like the priest, huh? Let's get mass on Sunday then. We can go play. No skipping church. I screw the brother, so too did the sister. That day, Nelly would be turning 14, and Mel, three years her senior, was 17. Thank you for clearing that up. I was wondering. You saw it with her own eyes, so you know just how much she has changed. She was always a cute little girl, and she grew into an even more beautiful young woman. Though she was only 14, she was well on her way to becoming a fine lady. As for her character, well... <laughs> but a girl like that has her own charms, would you not say? Drifting down the river of time, the two siblings matured into healthy young adults, but the core of their relationship did not change in the slightest. Nelly was, was very much attached to her brother, 
and as much as Mel complained, he still cared deeply for his sister. Around the time the sun had begun to set, carriages started lining up outside as well-dressed aristocrats, aristocrats <laughs> made their way into the house. As Nelly had suspected, the majority of them were boys. Yes, I understand. You don't need to say anything more. Rose Manor, right? Okay, we'll go together. Me? Alone? No, please don't make me. The inhabitants of Rose Manor are surely living quite contented lives. And I'm sure they don't remember a thing. Can you be any more... Any more mysterious? The room with the fireplace was always kept in pristine condition, so they could entertain guests at any time. Walls colourfully decorated with tapestries and stained glass windows gave testament to their great fortune. The servant's first assignment every morning was to clean this room. Pitchers, silver plates and silverware were polished to a shine so they could be proudly put to use at a moment's notice. <clears throat> and for even events like their daughter's birthday, the room served an even more important role. The table's tops were removable, so they had ordered new tabletops with designs made especially for this occasion. Okay, rich people. And once the banquet had drawn to a close, tables speckled with half-empty wine glasses and leftover candied fruits were removed off to the side to make room for, of course, the festivities. Good evening, Lady Nelly. You're looking particularly lovely today. Nelly, I had these jewels cut just for you. You'll let me have this dance, won't you? <sighs> What's the matter, Nelly? You look exhausted. These are pretty good. Want one? I know you like sweets. They're apples candied and rock sugar, I think. You disappoint me, dearest Mel. Oh? What do you think is the matter? They just keep coming. It never ends. It's driving me up the wall. Everyone's just repeating the same lines they've been taught. And they all think pretty jewels and requests to dance are enough to make a girl swoon. But I think that is true for you, Nelly. I mean, it's also part of the etiquette back then, right? Though, why is she disappointed with me? Well, maybe she wants you to ask her to dance? Hmm. Uh, I think I'm done with birthday parties after this year. They'll probably throw an even bigger one next year. Huh? Why? Well, you know. You're about that age, Nelly. We are a reasonably distinguished family, so there are a number of different houses that would like to have connections with us. So... So, what you're saying is, do it for the family? No, that's not... I won't date or marry anyone. 
have no interest in being used as a pawn in their interfamily politics. Pawn? I wouldn't go that far. Uh, and I'm sure father wants to let you choose yourself. You know, um, someone you actually love. Love? I never thought I would hear you talking about love, dearest Mel. Uh, you don't even understand what makes Shakespeare's play so beautiful, and you're talking about love. I, uh... You fell asleep during Romeo and Juliet, and you're talking about love? We went all the way out to the Globe Theatre, too. Well, pardon me for being ignorant when it comes to romance and the arts. But you're not, Nelly. Shakespeare's make-believe story made you cry like a baby. Anyone would cry at that. You'd have to be crazy to sleep through it. That's not what I'm saying. Someone as emotionally vibrant as you, Nelly, would have no problem finding love. Ah, dearest Mel. We should dance. Lady Nelly, could I have this? Let's dance, dearest Mel. Uh, what? Me? Wait a... Uh... Come on, I really like the song. C quit pulling on me, Nelly. What's the point of us dancing? We're siblings. Uh, mother and father are staring daggers at us. No matter. What day is it today, dearest Mel? Your birthday. Exactly. So I can do what I want. Now, attend to your princess as a proper prince should. Oh jeez, how did I get myself into this? Nelly's skirt fluttered along with her as she stepped in time to the music. She was not only a skilled singer, but a skilled dancer as well. Mel, on the other hand, fumbled over his own feet, trying to keep up. One would be hard-pressed to describe his dance abilities as good, even as fluttery. Though boys of his pedigree were taught to dance as part of their etiquette lessons, he found himself more being dragged around by his sister. He could hardly be said to be attending to her. But this is humiliating. Because his parents had been hands-off in raising him, largely giving him free reign to study and learn what he pleased, Mel looked like a tangled-up marionette. From throughout the hall, he could hear giggling, uncomfortable chuckling, and people coughing to disguise their laughter. <laughs> wow, can you be any more subtle? Come now, dearest Mel. If this is the best you can manage, what are you going to do when you find a girl that catches your eye? I won't, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Follow my lead, Mel. One, two, three. One, two, three. Mm. Nelly alone enjoyed her time dancing with her brother, and quite thoroughly had that. It did not matter to her that he moved awkwardly, or that the guests were giving them cold stares. Chill out. It may be unconventional, but is it really so bad, dancing with your brother? I mean, I know we're kind of leading up to... You know, I think it's quite apparent, but... A dance. Eh. Because even though dancing at the time was considered part of courting, you would still be dancing with 
other people that were more like friends, right? So why is it so weird to dance with your brother? Huh. I've always wondered that. Because I think it was mentioned in one of the Jane Austen movies as well. Like, oh, well, you're not my brother, so it's not going to be weird. What does it make? What makes it weird when you when it's also considered normal to dance with a friend? I don't know. If you have any knowledge about that, I would be interested. It was their parents who first cracked under the pressure. Of course. Just as their father was about to give an exaggerated cough and stop the music, a ruckus suddenly swelled up near the entrance. What could that be? Who knows? Whatever's going on, I've been spared. The music came to a stop, and the party guests began bustling. The sibling's father spoke up sternly above the noise in order to quell the spreading commotion. He ordered the servants to investigate, had the music restarted, gave a short apology for the interruption, and set the party back on course. I went to go check on the entrance with the other servants, as I recall. Oh my, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> These are not my memories, but those which dwell within the mansion. Do you think we should be following what happens next from my perspective then? That is not what confused you? Well, your questions shall be answered in time. In time. Now, let us return to our tale. Though the party had fallen still for a moment, their father's decisive actions restored the guests' festive moods in short order. So it was not by any means the commotion that caused the ball to conclude earlier than planned. Oh dear, I hear thunder. It was rather loud too. Sounds like we have quite the storm brewing. They lived in a country where the weather was nothing if not unpredictable. Rain was a frequent occurrence there. The stretches of time with clear skies grew longer as summer approached, but the weather was still somewhat unstable on the cusp of the two seasons. They had a strong wind that night as well, which turned the raindrops into little spears on the window. Were the party to continue on any longer, no one would be able to go home. Although their father was quite concerned that Nelly had not got on with any of the aristocrat boys, he decided to cut the festivities short. Thank goodness it ended early. How lucky I am. This must be a blessing for always being such a good girl. I'm not sure having your own birthday party cut short counts as lucky. But it was no fun. I can't help it if I'm not enjoying myself. And for heaven's sake, Arthur was here. I have no interest in dancing with that dunce. Arthur? Who's that again? Someone who was here. Unbelievable. You don't remember anything, do you, dearest Mel? He came over to play a few times when we were little. He's covered in gross freckles and he's a huge jerk. Hey, if freckles are great. Being a huge jerk is not, but... Yeah. He said my hair looked like the color of fallen leaves. Fallen leaves? Just thinking about that ugly smirk has me fuming. And yet he acts like nothing happened. He even calls me Lady Nelly, for goodness sake. Are you listening, dearest Mel? Uh, I'm listening, I'm listening. 
I wonder what the ruckus earlier was. <sighs> you weren't listening, were you? Who cares about that? S sorry but aren't you curious? It probably wasn't another guest, at least. Maybe a cat sneaked in? Do you think so? I do. But enough about that. Would you like to play cards in my room, dearest Mel? Seriously? I'm exhausted, though. It's not even that late. Hmm. Fine. Something feels kind of off. A cat. I want to go check. Come on, hurry up! H hold on. You don't need to drag me, Nelly. My birthday isn't over yet, so you're not done attending to me. Oh, Nelly. <sighs> so far this is quite slow paced and I was expecting this. Also, I saw some comments mentioning that the first story is... is like their least favorite, is like the one that... that is a slow start basically and it gets better as the whole game continues. I'm assuming that will be subjective as well, but just so you know. The rain just won't let up. I can't sleep. I wonder what the commotion earlier was about. Me too, buddy. Oh, for goodness sake. It's all the storm's fault. That's why I can't sleep. I'm just fretting over nothing. I'm sure Nelly was right. It was just a cat. Mm, don't think so. Maybe a dog. I can't sleep. I hardly ever have this much trouble falling asleep. What could this feeling be, I wonder? It's not quite foreboding. Walking around the house at this time of night isn't going to help anything. But I'm not going to fall asleep just lying here. The only sounds that could be heard in the dark corridors were the sharp pitter-patter of the rain, his footsteps, and his breathing. Though he was intimately familiar with the layout of the house, at night the hallways felt like an endless labyrinth veiled in shadows. No moonlight shone through the windows, so he naturally found himself moving cautiously despite being in his own residence. I mean, that's just smart. Don't, uh, like, stumble over things. Keeping the palm of his hand pressed up against the chilly wall, he put one foot in front of the other. But to where was he supposed to head? Mel, of course, had no way of answering that question himself. If he had anything, it was guidance from above. The path to his destination, lit by flashes of lightning. Or perhaps there was something else leading him along. Though he progressed with a fair bit of hesitation in his step, Mel was slowly but surely drawing nearer to one room in particular. He made his way through the seemingly endless halls. past the living room, its fireplace long since cooled, into another corridor, and then stopped outside an Abigail's bedchamber. Okay. 
just these backgrounds are really pretty they're not so detailed but this watercolor texture i don't know it makes it really pretty and you can kind of use your fantasy to fill in the details it's nice the dim glow of a lamp spilled through the cracks in the door a gust of wind is not necessary to make a flame flicker a person's movements or vibrations in the air from someone speaking. The slightest of motions can cause the light of a fire to qu quiver. Shifting subtly, as though nudged by an invisible fingertip. I can see light from inside. Is she still awake? A voice. He seemed to be hesitating. It would not be difficult for him to approach the door and peer inside. But he had reservations about peeping in on another's chambers, even if it was his own house. Well, that's just being not rude. Moreover, this room was assigned to a woman. There was a woman behind that door. What would you do, Master, in this situation? Would you succumb to a curiosity and gaze inside? Or would you respect the owner's privacy? <laughs> I shouldn't be doing this. Exactly. But the voice... It feels like it's calling to... Me? Or someone else. I, yes me, I, yes me, could send someone watching me at that moment. He had succumbed to his curiosity. He stood on the other side of the door from me, his flaxen eyes open wide, trying to remain as invisible as possible. The wavering in his heart seemed to create faint ripples in the air, which I pretended not to notice. Yes, I knew he was there. I could sense his presence and his wavering emotions. However, I could not begin to speculate as to his true feelings, or how great a surprise this was to him. I too am discovering new facets of this tale by viewing it through the eyes of the mansion. But it is not I who is of concern, Master. It is you. You and... I know I shouldn't be doing this. I should be ashamed of myself. But I... I can't look away. Who is that? The skin, it's so pale you can practically see through it. Is it that white because she was out in the cold rain? Her hair is white as snow and her eyes, they're like... Like, how do I describe it? My vocabulary truly lacks for situations like this. And they look like... Like blood. No, that's just disturbing. Then wine, perhaps. No, more translucent than that. Gemstones, then. Yes, gemstones. Her eyes are like rubies. I've never seen anyone like her before. What could they be talking about? Mel's eyes were affixed on the peculiar young woman. She had glass-like skin, eyes that glimmered in the flickering candlelight, and snow-white hair that flowed like, like luxurious silk. But her lips were bluish-purple, 
her soft, delicate skin sullied with grime, her twinkling eyes pointed down at the floor, and her hair a disheveled mess. She was, even at a glance, clearly not a lady of means. The tips of her fingers were cracked from the cold, her nails pale from malnutrition, and her garb little more than rags. However, true beauty is always visible, no matter what it may be hidden beneath. Even wrapped in a veil of insalubrity. Even if she thought herself hideous. I wonder what happened to her. Mel could no longer avert, avert his gaze from the girl's visage. visage. He had, for the time being, forgotten the shame he felt for peeping. As he strained his ears to hear the conversation taking place inside, a sickly voice arose from the white-haired girl's purple lips. So feeble was the sound that a gentle breeze blowing through the room could carry it away. I apologize for the trouble. Think nothing of it. Give your apologies and thanks to the mistress. Understood. There is something strangely comforting about this house. Almost as if I've been here before. If my father were here, I'm sure he would be quite fond of it. I am sorry about your father. That's not... There's nothing you could have done, I imagine. When you came to our rescue, he was already... Rescue? Father? Was that, perchance, what the commotion was about? He stared intently, entranced by the scene unfolding beyond the door. A gaze can often signal one's presence to others more effectively than words. The white-haired girl could likely sense him there as well. She flicked her gem-like eyes upward. That was when the boy finally felt a pang of panic. For a split second, his flaxen eyes met her ruby eyes, causing him to recoil from the door. His heart was pounding like the rain outside. Careful not to make a sound, he took one, two steps away. D did you catch me? I'm not sure. It was only for a moment. She can't have seen me. The boy did not have the courage to peek in on the room a second time, so he cautiously returned to his bedchamber as quietly as he could manage. But even beneath his covers, he could not erase that girl's eyes from his memory. Her melancholic red irises her voice, delicate as a glass sculpture. Her pale, almost lifeless skin. Her pure white hair. Every singular detail kept him from banishing her image from his mind. Nor could he restrain his heavily pounding heart. Who could she be? Is something the matter? No, I just thought I felt someone watching us. <laughs> it's only your imagination, I'm sure.
If not your imagination, then perhaps some unseen force was watching you. Unseen force? Are you familiar with how people refer to this mansion? Rose Manor. Yes, indeed. It is called Rose Manor because you can smell the sweet fragrance of the Rose Garden even at a great distance. But that is not what I meant. It is said that a witch resides within the house. A witch? I have not heard any such stories. You probably wouldn't have. It was a very, very long time ago. Nothing you need concern yourself with. You have a peculiar presence about you. Should I consider that a compliment? <laughs> it's getting late. You should get some rest. A room has already been set aside for you. But first, may I ask you one thing? Yes? I do not believe you have given me your name yet. My name... My name is... Oh. Mm. Wake up! Get up, Mel! What? Huh? It's morning? You disappoint me, dearest Mel. It's very much long since morning. I didn't see you at breakfast, so I came to find out what was the matter. I've really been asleep that long. And father is too lenient on you, dearest Mel. Oversleeping is hardly proper behavior for a firstborn son. I... I know. But before that... Yes, dearest Mel? What are you doing in here? You can't just go prancing into a boy's bedchamber. Leave that to the servants. I did send one for you. You're the one who refused to wake up. Besides, it's not like we're strangers. We used to sleep together all the time. That was long ago. Things are different now. Oh, you're overthinking it, silly. Now hurry up. Out of bed, sleepyhead. Alright, alright, I'm getting up. So you can see yourself out. Oh my, you look awful, dearest Mel. For someone who overslept, you look like you didn't get a wink last night. Y you think so? You didn't go out on the town last night, did you? Naughty, naughty boy. I, I I would never. You know that. You squeaked. I don't think I believe you. I did go out last night or anything. I'm tired because... You had me playing cards until late, Nelly. Hey, we weren't playing for that long. Besides, look at me. I got up just fine. Uh, anyway, shoo. I can't get dressed with you in here. Fine, I'm leaving. <sighs> oh, I almost forgot, dearest Mel. Uh, what now? Come on, no need to be mean. 
I'm sure you'll be quite surprised at the news. Oh. At breakfast, which you missed, father told us... Told you what? Do I really want to say? It sounds like you want me out of your room, dearest Mel. Please, Nelly. We got a new maid today, from a house we have ties to, supposedly. I've never seen anyone like her before. For supposedly coming from a good family, she isn't very graceful and I've never seen her at social gatherings. But that's not the surprising part. Does that maid... She's peculiar. Has a very unusual appearance, that one. Have white hair? Well, how do you know that, dearest Mel? Yeah, well, that was an easy guess, wasn't it? Thanks, Nelly. Uh, hey, get back here. Oh, for goodness sake, what's gotten into him? I mean, honestly, I'm more curious about that white-haired girl than, than you as well. <laughs> eh. ah, I'm wondering, shall we, shall we end it here for today? I'm very curious about the story, but yeah. I mean, as you saw there, uh, we are at the first door, so there are several doors which are the chapters, I suppose, in this game. But I don't know how long each one is. I know approximately how long the game overall is, but not how long each part is. I think they're also different lengths, so... Yeah, it's always hard to find a spot where it's good to take a break, but I think that's enough for the beginning. I'd be very happy if you told me what you think, what your impression is so far. If you already know the game, because I think it is fairly well known in like the visual novel scene, I guess. Um, no spoilers, please. But yeah, any any input, any tips that may help. If they're spoiler free, I think would be quite nice, would be appreciated. Um, yeah, so far I like it. It's slow, but that's what I expected and I don't mind it. I like the vibes, I like the art, it's very pretty. Music, it fits. Let's put it that way. It's not It's not bad or anything, it's just not something I would listen to as a standalone, but it fits the game so far, I think. So, yeah. That's it for me today. As I said, please leave me a comment what you thought. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and consider subscribing to be notified about the upcoming parts. I also have a Twitter that is linked down below. And if you just use this to get a glimpse of the game and want to play it for yourself, then I put some links below for the PC version, but this also came out on various consoles, including the Switch, which I think is a bit of a different version, but I'm not quite sure. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye bye!